<laughs> I have no idea where this is going. Yay! Welcome to starting lineup for round six. I'm your host, Jason Seguini. Right next to me, the Kansas Cowboy, Andrew Wiebe. Huge show for you this week. I'm going to say this. It's going to be the grandest show ever. I don't, I don't think it's going to be the best show. It's not going to be the longest show, but there's a lot of stuff in here. I think it's going to be good. Now look, if I knew it was going to be grand, I would have dressed up a little bit. I would have, you know, I would have skewed yeah. the plaid. This, I guess this is my favorite starting lineup shirt. I think yeah. you've made fun of this one before. What's the cowboy tuxedo? Is this it? It's close. All right. Last week's no-brainer choice for fantasy stardom was Federico Iguain against a Toronto team that had a lot of holes in it. Andrew, he certainly let down the masses. Yeah, you see these bags under my eyes? The guilt? is overwhelming. I have barely slept, Jason. Visions of Bradley dancing in my head. I'm sure there's some fantasy owners out there too. You let me know on Twitter. Look, I've already apologized, but it felt hollow. Please, fantasy owners, accept this sonnet as a sign of my contrition. Yay! The matchup that seemed was a no-brainer. Caldwell was out. The potential was there for a big gainer. Load up on Columbus, on Pipa. I was especially keen but Bradley made me look silly. The result, most unforeseen. Turns out, my advice, something you'd find in a latrine. But this week is different. I've learned my lesson. Portland's matchup is juicy. They're full of aggression. Valeri's an option, and Nagby's back to the player of old. They'll hit Chivas on the counter, get some timbers in the fold. Yeah! Well, thanks, Andrew. That latrine reference was very fitting of your fantasy advice. Moving on now, round five saw Mauro Diaz with another exceptional week, but player of the week honors went to somebody else, Andrew. That's right, Jay. It was Clint Dempsey he netted his first MLS hat trick, a goal in the first half, then two late goals to tie the game, 4-4 for Seattle. Would have just been two, but Dempsey grabbed the ball at the spot. Pineda, he gave it away. You have to at that point. With Dallas ho hosting Seattle this weekend, certainly had a lot of questions coming in about these two guys and this game in general, which brings us to our transfer matchup. Yeah! All right, Jay, I'm taking Clint Dempsey in this one. He's going back to Texas, going to Dallas. Remember, he played his youth soccer there, and he's got 30 points in just 215 minutes. He is the best player points per minute in the game. I know Dallas is a tough matchup, but I think he and Obafemi Martins have a partnership that's going to work. He's going to get a goal, maybe an assist. I've made promises before. This one I'm sticking by. I hope this goes as well as your former promises, Andrew. I'm going to get out my cheat sheet as if we were in a penalty kick shootout, and oh, I'm yeah. going to read some notes for our viewers. 10, 4, forget that one, 7, 8, 12. Those are the point totals that Mauro Diaz is getting you through his first five games. Now, that's two goals and three assists. But remember, he didn't get an assist for that sick pass he made on Watson's goal in that one game a while ago. You know what I'm talking about. We're going to show it. Show, roll the tape, Albert. Roll it. All right, here are the other things. How did Portland score four goals against Seattle last week? Well, they put speed out on the wings. Oh, what does Dallas have? They have speed out on the wings. Not only am I sure about Mauro Diaz hurting Seattle this weekend, I'm also doubling up on Fabian Castillo to be a big part of this as well. Look, if you want to consider other things here, Diaz is cheaper than Clint Dempsey by more than $1.5 million. And Dallas has two double weeks coming up in the near future. Seattle, only one. The answer here is simple, it's Mauro Diaz. Look, you're as excited as you are long-winded. Congratulations. All right, we are moving on now from my great advice to somebody else's great advice. Quincy Ameriqua, player for Chicago Fire. He is a forward. He's been doing damage on the field. He's also been doing damage in fantasy. Why? Because he captains himself. That's genius. Well, look, we went to him. We said, we want you on camera for us. He's going to do it. He's going to give you your fantasy advice. This is Quincy Ameriqua's tip of the week. <laughs> What's up, fantasy owners? I'm Chicago Fire Forward, Quincy Mariqua, and this is my tips of the week for round six. So the San Jose Earthquakes are now back from their first bye week, and if you didn't get a chance to read that sweet, sweet article written by Mr. Ben Jada, then you missed out on my high praise of Shea Salinas. 
He will definitely be in my starting lineup because he's taking all of San Jose's set pieces, and on top of that, Columbus is coming off their first loss of this season. So I expect them to come out flying with high pressure in the attack, which will allow for Salinas to have joy on the fast counter. Hopefully banking some serious bonus points, and with the Quakes being at home, you know that goals are in their future. These guys wanted me to keep it short, but another matchup I really like this weekend is Sabarillo against the back line of Philly. So if you can afford him, and you should be able to if you've got me in your lineup, wink wink, I think he's definitely due for a goal or two this weekend. That's all for me this week. Be sure to join the hashtag BeatQuincy MLS Fantasy Challenge League, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Well, thanks, Quincy, for your advice, and good luck against the impact this weekend. Let's move on to some fan questions coming in from Rudy Ur Urquiza. Rudy U. Rudy U says he wants to know who to give the armband to, and even put a hashtag OCaptain, oh, my captain, in there. Rudy, brownie points to you. Sorry, I can't pronounce your last name. Andrew, you know what that means. At number three, Robbie Keane. Look, not breaking ground with this one. He is always a guy to look out for your fantasy team. But they are home again against Vancouver, who want to get out on a break, perhaps push numbers forward. When are LA at their best? When they counter. I think they'll have chances to do it in this match. At number two, Javi Morales taking on the Union. No, no Joe Plata, I know, they're missing that speed element, but it doesn't matter. The Union have been so weak against restarts this year, and Javier Morales is one of the best in the league at delivering them. You think Schuler's gonna get in there? You think Sabo's gonna get in there? He can get you goals, assists, bonus points, and shutouts. He is the complete package. And at number one, Thierry Henry, baby. DC United primed for a little TT magic. Four goals, two assists in six games all time against these guys, and he's well rested. He was chilling last weekend. Now he is on grass, and he is gonna love it, and he is gonna get you some fantasy points. At number three, Diego Valeri. He woke up last week, and why? Because Portland went back to what worked. Speed out on the wings, he's able to move the ball around the field, follow it up down the middle of the field, and scored a goal. I think you're gonna see more of the same from him in the coming weeks. At number two, take your pick. Any attacker from Dallas against Seattle, I think there are going to be goals in this one. Look, it might not be a 4-4 game like it was last week for Seattle, but I could see 2-2, 3-2 in this game. Get some of those attackers on your team, whether it's Clint Dempsey, Obafemi Martins, Mauro Diaz, Fabian Castillo. You're going to find some goals in this game. And finally, speaking of goals, Landon Donovan. He was my fantasy captain last week, got me 10 points without a goal. I think he gets the goal this week. He's had success in the past against Vancouver. And look, LA is going to be trying to get him the ball. Weeby told you to go with Robbie Keane. I think Keane is going to give up the ball to Landon Donovan whenever he can to get him that goal and get it out of the way. LA wants to finally move on from this Landon 135. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Jason Zaghini says Landon Donovan is going to get 135. Another thing people are talking about, Jay, that's the Ramondo injury out there in Salt Lake. With him out and Kromberg on a bye, who do you like a keeper this week? I'm going to stick with a player I brought up a couple weeks ago. That is Luis Robles of the New York Red Bulls. They're playing at D.C. Look, I know you throw out the records when these teams play, but with Hamas and Olave coming back in for the Red Bulls and arrested one at that, of course, Terry Henry will be back as well. I expect New York to pick it up against DC. They've struggled to score, uh, have DC. Could be a shutout for Robles. I don't like a ton of goalkeepers this week for shutouts, but he's the one I would pick. Uh, I'm with you on the goalkeeper conundrum here. I had Kronberg still figuring out what I'm going to do. It's pretty much fantasy sacrilege, but I'm going to go with an away team. Tally Hall, for me, the obvious pick this week for a shutout. New England have stunk up the joint this season when it comes to goal scoring. Just two in five games, one of those an own goal. Jose Goncalves, well done. Losing David Horst hurts for Houston. I still think Hall is as good as bad as any. Look, no obvious candidates. You're going to have to take a chance. All right, Andrew, let's take a look at the leaderboard from round five. Speaking of leaderboards, I went with the Arnold Palmer this week oh, instead yeah. of water. That I heard an interesting story about on. Arnold Palmer this week during Masters. Maybe look that one up, Gary Player. All right, uh, let's take a look at the starting lineup league. In first place, the Picnic Club. Good job, Elliot Jeffords, picking up a whopping 106 points. Yeah, practically doubled my score, Jason. In second place, Santa Monica United. James H., no last names here, just initials. That's okay, but look, 96 points. Good work, James. Finally, in third place, Sounders Forever Jen Wisemore with 90 points. Think she had Clint Dempsey uh, on her team? Good I think guess. all these folks probably had Clint Dempsey 
on their team. Thanks to Quincy Ameriquois for joining us. And as always, enjoy this weekend's action. Good luck in your fantasy matchups. We'll see you next week.